Hello and howdy everyone. Uh, here to talk about the David Lynch film, uh, Twin Peaks, Fire Walk With Me. And I enjoyed it. I, I almost uh, don't really know how to um, review the film. I, I watch television series here at home. I, I basically, I belong to Blockbuster.com which is going out of business, so now I guess I don't belong to Blockbuster.com. But uh, for the past 10 years, 11 years, I've been a Blockbuster.com member. Uh, they, you know, send me movies in the mail. I return them to the store. I uh, rent movies in the store. And then when I return the movies to the store, they send me a, you know, disc in the mail. Uh, I stick to getting movies at the actual store, but I rent uh, my queue, my internet queue is filled with uh, television seasons. So I've got, uh, you know, television seasons coming to me in the mail. I uh, exchange them in the store for movies. Um, that's that's just what I do with, with uh, television series, but uh, I actually own uh, Twin Peaks. <clears throat> I wanted to uh, watch Twin Peaks in its entirety uh, last year, or I guess earlier this year. I did The Wire. Uh, I watched The uh, Wire for the second time from start to finish. Uh, I also did the same with Breaking Bad as it was leading up to its uh, final season. Um, and I feel that Breaking Bad and The Wire are two of the greatest television series of all time, uh, like hands down. Um, and I was thinking about what else is, you know, a great television series. Uh, and I immediately went to Twin Peaks. I own Twin Peaks. I, I have the, uh, the pilot film. Uh, I have the first season and the second season. And I guess now that Blockbuster's gone, gone out of business, I have uh, Fire Walk With Me as well. Um, so I don't really know how to... Uh, review the film outside of the context of the series in general, which again, I think is uh, one of the greatest television series of all time. Um, it uh, was, you know, a game changer, you know, basically. Uh, television series still try and be like Twin Peaks, I think. Uh, and after just freshly watching it, I, you know, I think that's pretty accurate. Um, I, I watch a uh, an episode a night. I don't watch uh, episode after episode after episode. I don't uh, binge watch, uh, I guess is what they're calling it now. Uh, I, I uh, watch an episode a night, basically, of, of any uh, television series I want to watch. If it's a comedy, I watch two episodes. Basically, I watch an hour of that show a night, um, just because I feel it's uh, very important and essential to the experience of uh, a serialized television is anticipation. Uh, anticipation, as always, is the best part of anything. Uh, and when you're waiting a week uh, and months for that next episode, uh, that anticipation starts to build. Uh, and it is integral to the uh, experience. Um, so to maintain that anticipation, to capture that somewhat, uh, I watch only one episode per day. I do not allow myself to watch more than one episode uh, per day. If it's a comedy, uh, then, then two episodes. But still, um, I find that that really helps because, uh, you know, especially when I was watching, uh, you know, The Wire, Breaking Bad, even Twin Peaks to a lesser extent, um, you know, they end their episodes on such cliffhangers and of course they're so tightly scripted and brilliant that you know you can't wait to watch the next episode and I found that uh, you know as I was getting off work you know I couldn't wait to go home and watch that next episode of The Wire I couldn't wait to get home and watch that next episode of Breaking Bad so that control and that anticipation was still a part of the watching viewing experience uh, and I feel that you should not watch uh, a television series binge watching. You shouldn't, I mean, I guess it's so easy to do now, but you shouldn't watch five episodes of something in a day. Uh, I feel that you don't get the proper arc of the story. 
Uh, you don't get the proper arc of the season and the series in general. Um, I think if you uh, at least space it out, watch one episode per day, it gives you a chance to absorb that story um, and it becomes you know much more clear in the whole of things. Uh, again, I think Twin Peaks is brilliant. I give this film, you know, I guess a lot of people were were disappointed that it wasn't a sequel. Uh, it did not pick up where the television series left off. Uh, the television series was about 29 episodes, including the uh, the pilot. Um, so instead of being a sequel uh, to show you uh, what happens to Agent Dale Cooper, um, it's a prequel to show you in detail everything that you pretty much know. Uh, just to, you know, show you how it happened and what went down. Um, so I think there was a lot of disappointment in there. Twin Peaks uh, ran from 1990 to 1991. Again, it was only two seasons. Um, and then they had the film in 1992. Uh, expecting, you know, again, Twin Peaks ends uh, on a very uncertain note. You know, you're, you're kind of well depressed about the ending. Um, because it's certainly not happy. Uh, and you want some continuation of that. Um, instead, you get the lead-in. You know, technically what you already know, except you're just seeing it in great detail. You're watching it happen. Uh, I feel that Twin Peaks is, in essence, uh, a story about evil. Um, I think that's why it's so you know depressing, is the evil... For all intents and purposes, cannot be defeated. Um, evil will always be there. Um, evil just is. Uh, as good just is, uh, so is evil. Um, and I think that that's kind of the point of, of Twin Peaks. In a way, uh, the film uh, really, I think, and probably how Twin Peaks started, because uh, if I remember correctly, Twin Peaks was originally a, a thought in David Lynch's mind as a film, but the idea grew to be so great that it, you know, turned into a television series. Um, I think it's about family, you know, dysfunctional family, um, uh, you know, the dangers that can come of that. You know, Lynch always takes uh, what seems plain, uh, what seems average and normal, and twists it into uh, something dark and sinister uh, and honest. Uh, you know, he doesn't, uh, because oftentimes that is that way. You know, you, um, you know, Tim Burton barely scratches the surface on that, you know, what, what Lynch does. Um, but, you know, Lynch takes that suburban, uh, you know, friendly, happy American dream and shows, you know, what it really is and what lies beneath the surface. And I think that, you know, there's no greater example of that, at least more clear-cut and accessible than, than Fire Walk With Me. Uh, you know, it's basically the story of a dysfunctional family. Um, I also believe that it's the story uh, of, of the Black Lodge and the uh, residents of the Black Lodge. Uh, again, basically, your evil characters and about the persistence of evil. Um, and can it be defeated? Uh, you know, is it even possible? Uh, you know, I, and as a whole, I look at Twin Peaks as the story of Bob. Uh, you know, Bob is the villain, uh, mostly unseen, uh, you know, as a wandering spirit um, entity that possesses people and, and makes them do great harm. Uh, because that's what Bob wants. Bob wants evil and harm, uh, you know, at all times. Uh, Bob has always been, and apparently Bob will always be. Um, and Twin Peaks is the story of Bob uh, and following Bob uh, to, you know, where is he? What is he doing? Um, how can they stop him? Um, and I just uh, kind of looked at it as that, one small piece of a an eternal story um, because Bob cannot cannot be defeated um, and yes the other residents of the Black Lodge can try and control him uh, uh, but you know it, Bob is as Bob does um, so it uh, it really I didn't look at it as following the 
you know, exploits of uh, Special Agent Dale Cooper. Um, I looked at it as, because, I mean, I hate to spoil it, I don't feel I'm making a very general spoiler here, but, uh, you know, Bob wins. Um, and, and it turns out that Special Agent Dale Cooper, for all his genius and his brilliance, uh, is just another victim. Uh, and a long line of victims of Bob, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I I think that's you know generally how how I look at it. Yes, it's brilliant. It's filled with uh, you know uh, fantastic characters, but I think um, again, in essence, uh, Twin Peaks is is the story of Bob and and the uh, and a meditation on the uh, nature of evil, um, but. Twin Peaks Firewalk With Me, the film, uh, definitely has all those thought, you know, themes, but really it gives Lynch his focus, his focus point of turning that uh, picture-perfect suburban family on its ear and showing, uh, you know, the dread uh, and terror that, uh, you know, lives inside, uh, that can, you know, be so easily hidden uh, from the rest of the people in your town and, and, and the people around you. Um, movie stars, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people from the show were in this. Um, uh, Kyle McLaughlin, a special agent Dale Cooper, he's not in the film too much uh, because, again, he just, you know, gets onto the case, so he's not in the film too much. Um, uh, mostly, again, the story focuses on Laura Palmer, um, who is, let's see, what, what her name was. Uh, Cheryl, no, Cheryl Lee, is that right? Yes, Cheryl Lee was Laura Palmer. Um, uh, mostly focuses on Cheryl, uh, Laura Palmer, Cheryl Lee, uh, and her, you know, final days. Also, you know, a part of that is the current inhabitor of uh, Bob, uh, the father of Laura Palmer, uh, Leland Palmer. I also kind of look at Laura as the daughter of Bob. Um, Leland was possessed by Bob at a young age, uh, you know, as a, as a young teenager. It's never fully described, but we know that he's a young, uh, you know, practically a child um, when he uh, is introduced to Bob and Bob, you know, enters him. Uh, so Bob has been Leland for pretty much all of Leland's life. and. Bob was Leland when Leland made Laura, so I always looked at Laura as being doomed from the start. You know, uh, she was bred to be the next inhabitant of Bob. Uh, and if, again, as Bob said, if Bob could not have her, then no one would have her. Then she would die. Uh, because, you know, you can kill your own kid, I guess. Um, and that's what Bob would have done. And that's what Bob did. Uh, so I've always looked, uh, now I look at Laura Palmer as the daughter of Bob. You know, she is half evil incarnate, uh, and her fate was pretty much sealed, uh, as soon as she was born. Um, Leland Palmer, played by the brilliant Ray Wise, uh, he was, a, you know, kind of around, he was a, you know, a character actor, he is a character actor. Um, Twin Peaks, forever, you know cemented his career. I mean, he is Leland Palmer. Uh, he is Bob. Um, he has played that variation of that character ever since, which is fine. He does it brilliantly. Uh, you know, I'm sure it kind of sucks to be pigeonholed, typecast into that. But again, if you're typecast as the ultimate bad guy, then, well, you're doing something right. Um, uh, he's brilliant in this. Uh, he's, he's just a fantastic actor, and I love his performance. I love watching him work. Um, I don't know if I've given the film a rating. I think I'll just go ahead and give it an 8. Uh, part of me wants to give it a 9, just because I think tele, uh, Twin Peaks, as an experience as a whole, is a 10. You know, uh, you know iconic television. Um, so it's kind of weird. As, again, I, I watch this, you know the next night. I just, again, watched it as a continuation of the series. So uh, it took me, what, I guess 30 nights. I spent one month watching uh, Twin Peaks. Um, so again, I just watched it the night after the the last episode. Uh, so it's, it's pretty much 
bulked in with the thoughts I have in general uh, of the series. Um, but, you know, the film is, is devastating and it, it uh, really, um, again, is disturbing when you think about uh, the happy-go-lucky family and the facade that we put up uh, to those around us. And if you're in a small town, it's even more amplified because everyone is in everyone's business. And it, uh, you know, we never truly know uh, what goes on behind closed doors. And in this instance, it's, you know, basically hell. Uh, it's very weird. Of course, David Lynch is very weird. Uh, I mean, he, he, all of his films are uncompromising. They're, they're odd. Uh, they're sometimes uh, hard to crack, if not near impossible to crack. This is uh, far more one of his uh, accessible films, uh, his more accessible films. Um, you know, it's pretty much a straightforward story. There is some uh, symbolism. Uh, there is some abstraction, as always. I mean, it wouldn't be David Lynch without abstract symbolism. Um, I, David Lynch is one of my favorite filmmakers. I, I really uh, love all of his work. Um, I think uh, The Elephant Man is one of the best films I've seen. Uh, I think Blue Velvet is one of my favorite films. Uh, also Mulholland Drive, uh, one of the best films I've seen. Again, David Lynch is just probably in my top five filmmakers. Uh, I love his work. I, I wish that he wasn't, uh, you know, maybe so brilliant or something so that he could produce more films, you know, uh, you know, he, he goes at, you know, a snail's pace, at, at Kubrick's pace, basically, uh, which, you know, I, you know, I want more from him. Uh, I guess Inland Empire is holding me over for some time, but I, I really want to see something new from him. Uh, I don't really know what else to say. If you've never watched um, Twin Peaks, I would highly recommend it. Uh, do whatever you can to watch it. I think it stands easily with the best television of all time. Um, and I don't think I'm alone in that. In fact, I saying that I almost feel cliched because, yeah, everyone knows Twin Peaks is one of the greatest shows of all time. Uh, it's kind of like saying, yeah, The Wire. Uh, obviously, The Wire is one of the best shows of all time, if not the best. Um, so, yeah, I think you should watch Twin Peaks. Uh... Just watching this film alone, I think it would still be, you know, fine, especially if you're a David Lynch fan, uh, you know, a David Lynch, uh, or just watching David Lynch films. Um, it certainly stands up with the rest of them, but, uh, you know, again, to watch it as a part of the series, as a part of the whole, it's just something totally different. Uh, it feels totally different. Um... And, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, essential viewing in, in, in that case. Uh, but I think, you know, if again, if you just watch this, just to put it in, I'd still think it's an eight. It's still a very powerful, very disturbing drama, uh, you know, about uh, dysfunctional families. Um, both uh, literal, you know, flesh and blood and the dysfunctional family of the Black Lodge uh, and trying to uh, keep Bob under control. Because, um, again, I feel that Twin Peaks is, in essence, the story of Bob uh, and the inhabitants of the Black Lodge. Um, I guess that's pretty much all i got to say uh, about it. I, I, I think I pretty much said everything I wanted to say, so I'll wrap it up. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, Twin Peaks uh, Fire Walk With Me uh, from David Lynch. Uh, and I give it a... You know, I'll give it a solid eight. As as standalone, you know, I'll, I'll give it a solid eight. Um, as a part of of the uh, you know iconic experience of Twin Peaks, you know, maybe I'll give it a nine or you know just to lump it in. The whole Twin Peaks is a ten, you know, so this is a part of that. Uh, so it's you know an important essential viewing. Uh, so there you go. Uh, thanks for watching.